we're going to sing America. something she suggested that a smile is a gift and when we wear that smile when we give it away we've given a great gift to the world so today I'd like to encourage you all in the spirit of peace and love to use your smiles to their best advantage <laughs> Now it's the proverbial uh, passing of the gavel, one of the best acts I've had all, all year. So, with thee I give the presidency gladly. Congratulations. Thank you. We're so grateful to Grant for all the work he's done this year, and we'd like to give him three little tokens of our appreciation. First of all, a plaque with the seal from this year. And this reads, presented to Grant Glenn, President, Downtown Topeka Rotary Club, 2016-2017, with deepest appreciation for your tireless efforts and outstanding leadership. Thank you. And we all ha also have the first half, first installment of two, of a book of pictures that Linda, uh, for Grant's year, that Linda Ireland has put together. The second half will be coming when it's done. Wow. <laughs> and it's really cool. The third thing is, this is from me, and Grant, I'd like to give you this little gift. It's called a giving card. And in the spirit of Rotary, we who are givers, there will be, there's a, a cash on that card, and he can donate that to any charity of his choice. So Grant, personally, I thank you so much for all the work that you've done. <laughs> we also get to change our banner. This is this year's banner. And it is called, this year's theme is Making a Difference. Uh, we'll move on to our guest introductions, and Frank, if you would, would come up. Do we have guests today? Oh, okay. Do you have them? Thank you, Madam President. You're welcome. All right. Well, good afternoon. Hi, Frank. Hi. 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 Well, we are privileged today to have a visiting Rotarian, and we have Eric Carrick. If you would stand, please. And Eric is from Topeka South Club. Thank you, Frank. Um, our July featured charity is Jobs for America's Graduates, or JAG. And there's a paper on your table that tells a little more about it. Uh, this is something I wasn't familiar with. It is a state-based national nonprofit organization dedicated to preventing dropouts among young people who are most at risk. So check out your table's information as well. We do have a few other announcements, and very sadly, I'm sure all of you know that Monty Williams passed away last Friday. He was a member of our club since 1998. He was a Paul Harris fellow. He had a passion for international service. And in case you didn't hear, there is a family visitation tonight from 5 to 8 p.m. at the Bowser Johnson Funeral Chapel on 6th Avenue. And in Lonnie's honor and memory, I'd like to uh, express a moment of silence. Thank you. We have two pr proposed new members announcements today. The first is Jay Van Blericum. 
This is his second announcement. Um, he's an attorney at the Kansas Office of the State Bank Commissioner, and he's sponsored by Jay Beffert. Our second new member announcement is Yana Cross, who's really brand new. She's with the American Family Insurance Shipman and Associates, and this is her first announcement. She's sponsored by Rehan Rizzo. Both of these new proposed new members are interested in youth, community service, international service, and fellowship. So let's give them a round of applause. You'll also see on your tables a notification about an event tomorrow night. It's called Light the Night, Lighting of the Historic Water Tower. There is sidewalk art, music, food, ice cream. It's at 8.30 at 11th and Quincy. And we're so proud that our very own Brian Falk has been instrumental in making this project a reality. So you can read some more about it on the tables as well. Um, now, what we have all been waiting for for months is who is going to win the Dream Vacation Raffle. Curtis Sneedon has been very instrumental in getting the tickets together and keeping them all straight. So Curtis is going to get to do the honors. Your choice. Thank you, President Grace. Well, at long last, I get to speak to you about the raffle, and I'm not haranguing you to buy tickets. <laughs> the moment is here. Don't suppress that applause. I'd like to have to. <laughs> this is really good. This is the big day where we get to find out who won the five, who will win the $5,000 dream vacation. I want to take a second to thank all of you who participated by either selling or purchasing tickets. And in particular, I want to thank the small cadre of Rotarians who helped keep this project moving forward. Frank Henderson was part of that group. Nikki Salazar was part of that group. Jane McCall was part of that group. Stacy Hammond. Uh, my special thanks, uh, and I really want to pause if I can find him. There he is. Uh, Dusty uh, has been really the machinery behind this thing that has kept it all moving forward. And kept it <laughs> Dusty assures me that uh, the, the financial statements are coming, but he's all thumbs up, so I believe that uh, despite the months of haranguing, this has turned out to be a great outcome for our club and our signature philosophic enterprise, but to be the Center for Peace and Justice. So thank you. Now, the moment is upon us, and I need a, a disinterested party from the audience to come up and help stir up these slips and then draw who the winner is. Eric, since you're here, I wonder if you would join us our system. Mr. Governor Eric Carr. You're welcome to clap for Eric. <laughs> So it's still not too late to give me your checks and cash and credit cards to you. Eric, and, and actually, just to be fair, let's let's be clear. Did I understand you to say a minute ago that you did buy some tickets? Uh, you know, I did. So okay, we well, don't, don't look don't in there. Look, okay. yeah. <laughs> so, in fact, you're, you're not completely disinterested any more than I am. And, and I've warned you since the beginning. I bought a bunch of tickets, so if he pulls my name, I'm going to Acapulco. So. But, but I work for the Boy Scouts, so you know you got to trust the Boy Scouts. Absolutely. This, this is a Bible approach. I just want to prepare people that you can in fact draw your own name. Yes. It's conceivable. Yes. But let's make sure that it is a random process. Stir those slips up thoroughly. There you go. Not looking. Not looking. Not looking. Okay. Grace Morrison. And one when, more when the news strikes you, grab just one ticket. And would you please read the name that you see there? Uh, it just has a last name. It says oh, Warshwick. That is fantastic. Thank you so much, Curtis, and our whole board here today has been. Well, now I'd like to introduce the program today, and I hope you know this person who's going to speak. Our speaker today is Grace Morrison. Oh, oh that's me. Okay. Well, we will get started then. I need a drum roll, I think. You might guess that the last few months I have thought about this moment a whole lot. 
Now, I hope that I have all of my ducks in a row. But if I don't, maybe they will at least be in the same pond. As we start our Rotary Year together, I want you to know that my comments are not about me, but about you, about us, about our club, and the 1.2 million Rotarians worldwide, and all that Rotary can and does do, the largest volunteer organization in the world. We really do matter, and we are making a difference. I'd like to take just a moment to say thank you to all of my predecessors who left me with some really big shoes to fill. First of all, Grant, who had the boldness to try big new things and make them work, like a signature event, the Freedom Festival, and who has led the effort for our club to provide a major grant to one organization so that we can make a much bigger impact, and who helped establish our peace initiative with the formation of the Peace Committee and the collaboration among all four clubs in the city, and believe me, that in itself is very big. And Joan Wagner left me a pair of big shoes to fill, too. Thanks a lot, Joan. Her tireless determination and effort has made the Freedom Festival an incredible success beyond all of our wildest dreams, not to mention that she was the first woman Rotarian and our first woman president. And thanks to our many uh, previous club presidents and leaders who have made our club strong, long-lasting, and a growing force for good in our community. And thanks also to all of you for trusting me to lead your club, our club, during this next year. I truly am honored, I'm humbled, and yes, I'm terrified. <laughs> I have to tell you a little bit about the Rotary International Convention in Atlanta. It was the first one that I ever attended, and honestly, with the truth, I really regretted going. But you made me go as president-elect, so I did. There was a huge, vast unknown, and this is just about how big I felt. How the heck was I supposed to navigate 40,000 people? I didn't know. A massive space. Innumerable breakout sessions that were happening all at the, at the same time, and even the basics like where to eat and how to get from one place to the next. It turns out the experience was one of the most energizing and engaging and enlightening that I've ever had. And I want to share a little bit of that with you. Everywhere I looked, I saw people from countries all over the world in all kinds of dress, Western, African, Japanese, you name it. It was everything. And I also want to tell you about my escalator experience. This was the badge that we had to wear all the time when we were there. And of course all these masses of people had to go up and down the escalator all the time to get from one place to the next. And I really was captivated when I was looking at their badges. Because you see up there, Topeka, United States, every country was listed at the bottom of the badge. And I, knew, I saw countries, France, Kenya, Brazil, Japan, England, Germany, absolutely all over the world. And the most amazing thing of all to me, that we were all there for the same purpose, to make a difference and to make our world a better place. During the opening ceremony, I witnessed what they call the flag ceremony. Many of uh, the Rotary Youth International Exchange students were there, and each of them carried the flag of a country that had a Rotary Club. As the country's name was read, the flag was dipped. I read that as respect to all others. The flags of over 200 countries were presented, and it took over 40 minutes. To me, it was very powerful, reinforcing how really big Rotary is. Honestly, it brought tears to my eyes. I thought it was going to be cheesy, but it was absolutely beautiful. And during the opening ceremony also was an inspiring presentation about polio plus. The speaker was a polio survivor, and her name was Minda Dimbler. You see her in the middle there. She walked on stage with arm and leg braces to support her terribly misshapen legs. She told us how she contracted the disease at age three in India, but was later adopted by an American family. She told us how she earned a PhD but after doing that, that wasn't enough. She decided to become an athlete, competing not just to complete a 
marathon, but no, she completed the Ironman triathlon all with her arms. Mm. And I was actually in the same room with Bill Gates and Jack Nicholas. Now granted, they were this big, <laughs> but we were in the same room along with 20,000 of my best friends. During that opening session, almost a half a billion more dollars were committed as magic money by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Coca-Cola, and several other partners. And during the convention, I had heard so many ideas that could help our club be better and stronger and do more, more ideas that we could possibly ever accomplish, but many that we might incorporate into our club. I was so inspired to see so many Rotarians at the convention and even on public transportation knowing that I was in the company of people who live by the guiding principles of integrity, service, fellowship, diversity, and leadership, and I always felt safe when I was around them. Just a, a shameless plug here, our convention next year is in Toronto, our neighbors, and I really encourage any of you who can possibly go to attend, and I certainly intend to. As I, I look around this room every week, I am absolutely and sincerely in awe of the wealth of talent, intelligence, leadership, and hearts for service. Every one of us gathered here together for the common goal of serving humanity and making a difference. And as I look at all of you, I dream of what we can accomplish together during the next year and beyond. And I'd like to share some of my dreams with you. I dream of more service opportunities. Now our club already does wonderful projects like providing shoes and coats to children in need, helping educate youth about water, helping expose every seventh grader in our city to the technical education and its value, and supporting healthy conflict resolution. But honestly, I believe we can do more. Rotarians, including us, are people of action, and I invite you into action. If you see a problem or a need, whether it's big or small, and it touches your heart, I encourage you to think of a solution and commit to it. You can make it happen and can enlist other Rotarians to help as well. All you have to do is ask. Rotarians love to be asked, and they almost always say yes. There is no idea too crazy or too impossible if you have a passion to solve a problem. So I encourage you, if you see a need, create a solution. <coughs> now, I may very well get in trouble with what I'm just about to say, either with the board or somebody else, but I say, skip the bureaucracy, skip the committees, skip the permission, and just go for it. Share your ideas with others in the club, and I'm certain that someone will want to join you. Ideas are absolutely unlimited, and here are some examples. During this year, Grant saw a need for tables and, and benches in a pocket park. And he simply made that happen. He announced that there was going to be a work fellowship play date on Saturday morning, and please come. And now we have great benches and picnic tables, and it was really so much fun. Another idea that I really love, but honestly I do not have time to implement right now, is vocational mentorship of high school students at Highland Park or Topeka High, or both. I've already checked this out with Tiffany Anderson, who's the 501 uh, superintendent. She checked it with some other people. She was very enthusiastic about it. They love the ideas, and what do we do next? So if you have an interest in this, please talk to me, and hopefully we can make this move forward. We could do things like assemble party bags for food pantries so the less fortunate can celebrate a birthday or an anniversary when they otherwise might not be able to. Or we could make fleece blankets for children in the hospital. The list is literally endless. I dream of an international service trip made available to our members and others. A couple of years ago, I went to the uh, RLI, I attended the Three Sessions Rotary Leadership Institute, and I quickly realized that our club is lacking an international project. 
Now, it's true that we connect, that we contribute to Rotary International to provide funds for global grants, which make incredible changes in the world. It's true that one of our very own members, Ray Hahn, has applied for and received significant global grants to dig fresh water wells in Bangladesh to avoid arsenic poisoning. And he's now working on another grant as well. But to, our, to my knowledge, our club has never had, at least since I've been a member, a hands-on experience in a third world or developing company or country, and I believe we should. I've talked to several Rotarians who have been on such trips, either to Guatemala or Africa, to help install water filters <coughs> or each just basic medical clinics. And to a person, every one of them was transformed by what they saw and what they experienced. I believe that all of us should have that opportunity to see firsthand how many people have to live and to be transformed in a way that only a hands-on experience can transform. With that in mind, I've asked our International Service Chair, Deborah Ricks, to research options for an international service project for our members and to present them to us at a later time. I dream of a very strong membership effort that can get our membership numbers to 200 or above. Every year, seems like every month, every week, we hear repeatedly that we need to invite guests, bring new members, and get our membership numbers up. You have heard the drill over and over again. And I have found myself asking why? What is the big deal? Who cares if we get the presidential citation? And why should I go to the bother of making that effort? So I've thought about it a lot, and I've listened to others, and I certainly paid attention at the RA convention. And I have come to the undeniable conclusion that the reason to focus on membership goes way beyond numbers and a citation with a nice piece of paper. We connect with friends. We give back to the community, to the world, and with a ripple effect that we'll probably never, ever know about. We have fellowship with like-minded and good people. We make the world a better place, one word, one person, one action at a time. We promote peace in our world, in our community, and even next door. At the District 5710 conference this spring, one of the speakers shared a story about his granddaughter. He wanted to instill in her the idea of service. And so he insisted that this 20-year-old, eye-rolling granddaughter attend a service project with him. She did not want to go, but he made her do it. A short time after the event, she wrote this to her grandfather. And please allow me to read this to you. Rotary is hands-on service in the local community. It is contributing to the end of polio. It is supporting medical professionals who are reaching a small community in Central and South America and Africa. It advocates for social justice, and people with influence in the community really care. It's men and women of varying ages and different genders who want to set an example for their families and be in service to others. It is members of all ages who care about me and what I'm doing to make a difference. It is new friends who I otherwise may not have gotten to know. I have absolutely come to a conclusion that they are inspiring, loving, and amazing individuals. Hey, now we are talking. That's the why. That's the stuff that matters. And it's the reason I am a Rotarian. Very, very powerful, especially from the mouth of a 20-year-old. So yes, membership really does matter. It is a fact that we will lose members for various reasons. So how could we not feel compelled to share the wonderful gift of Rotary with others? How can we not want to bring more people into this organization and keep it the vibrant force for good that it already is? For the year ahead, we have what I believe is a very strong membership team. We'll focus on several areas, attracting and keeping new members, on engaging and appreciating our existing members, on reaching out to those who are less engaged or who may miss a number of meetings, on increasing our diversity, and on reaching out to corporations who are not yet represented in our club. 
And I truly believe that when you think about all of the good that Rotary does and how much fun we have and the great friends and the great fellowship that we have, you will really feel compelled to invite friends and acquaintances and bring them to a meeting or a social or a service project just to check us out and see if it might be a good fit for them. Oh, and I have a great elevator speech, and I'll be happy to share that with you if you'd like. I dream of examining who we are as a club and where we want to be in three to five years. Several years ago, our club developed a strategic plan, and it really was excellent, but it may not still be who we are or where we want to go. I recently learned from our assistant district governor, Eric Carey, about a program which is called Club Visioning at almost no cost to our club. The process is geared specifically for Rotary Clubs and is facilitated by trained volunteer Rotarians to guide the four-hour visioning session. It will help us define who we are, what we stand for, and what we intend to do, and will help us commit to following through. And who knows, maybe my dreams will be affirmed and maybe they'll be thrown out all together. This year's board has enthusiastically approved moving forward with club visioning, and we are planning this in the fall, and Mark McGraw has kindly agreed to act as our club coordinator to help make the necessary arrangements. I really do believe this is one of the most important things that we do this year to keep our club healthy and strong, and you'll definitely be hearing more about this. I dream of greater generosity from our members. All of you, our club members, have been traditionally very generous in our giving to the Rotary International Foundation, to Polio Plus, and to our local foundation. Last year, as a club, our members gave over $23,000 to the RI Foundation and over $7,000 to Polio Plus. RI does amazing work with global grants and returns a portion of the donations to the district which in turn becomes available to our club as district grants to help fund our projects. The more we give to RI, the more good can be done, and the more we will have for our service projects. I would like to see that giving increase, even if only modestly. So please consider this with your personal giving. Now, I, I have to say a word about Polio Plus. This is for some of our newer members who may not know about this program, some of our older members who may have forgotten, or some of you who know everything about it. I just have to give you a little bit of history. About 35 years ago, Rotary International undertook the seemingly impossible task of eradicating polio from the face of the earth once and for all. At that time, there were 350,000 new cases of polio every year affecting children and devastating families. Now, after the incredible effort of Rotary and many other partners, last year there were only five cases in three countries. <laughs> now, just to be clear, because it's taken me a while to learn this too, your donations to support the cause of Polio Plus must be directed specifically to Polio Plus rather than going through the RI Foundation. I am confident that we can also increase our giving for Polio, Polio Plus. Now, I, I have to mention our cup money. There's our cups, our blue, pretty good blue cups and a little dollar or two. Every week for decades, we've been passing a cup for cup money at our meetings and putting in a dollar. <laughs> As you know, our cut money supports various charities each month, and it averages about $350 per month that we give to charities. Someone in our club recently shared a story about her father uh, many years ago, who, probably decades ago, who every time he went to Rotary, he had to make sure he had a dollar in his pocket to put in the cup for cut money at Rotary. And I was really struck when I thought about what that dollar meant then and what it means today. Now take just a moment to think about that. I challenge each of us beginning now to increase our cup money donation 
So the impact will be closer to what it was in the past. Now, that slide might be a very slight exaggeration of what we're hoping for, but I hope you get the picture. Now, I don't know what that number is for you, but I personally plan to put in $5 a week instead of my $1 that I've always put in. And this is about the same amount that I spend pretty much every day on cappuccino. <laughs> I dream of making our club super friendly and welcoming, please. I guess I left out a slide got mixed up. I envision it, that each of us intentionally reaches out to our guests, prospective members, to new members, and that uh, red badge is a clue, and other clubs in the area, and even to each other every single week. It's pretty easy to find ourselves sitting with the same people week after week, the people we know, conversation is very uh, comfortable and without intending to, there is some possibility that we might appear a bit cliquish. So I encourage you to make that extra effort to sit with someone new or someone you don't know and to say that extra hello, how are you, and glad to have you here, just to show you're interested in them and that you care. And I really hope that we begin to send actual, personal, handwritten notes to our guests and prospective members, telling them how glad we were that, we, that they came. We really do have a tremendous foundation to build on, and I know that we can make it even better. We will see what happens. I don't know what happened here. Oh, I know. Let me tell you about this slide. Each week we're going to try to uh, put together uh, thermometers, and it'll be not just pictures of this, but so we'll all have an idea of where we are with our giving to Rotary International, to Polio Plus, to our local foundation, and also our net membership. And here is our friendly club, just trying to remember this. I dream of having a whole lot more fun. <laughs> So watch out for crazy ideas and surprises at our meetings, and I don't even know what they are yet. We might try a few crazy things and see if they work, if they're fun, or maybe they'll bomb, I don't know. We might try turning our cup money into happy thoughts. And that's where you share a happy thought from the past week and donate, put in the cup, what you think that happy thought is worth. For example, my happy thought this week would be my recent nine days in Kauai with my family. Now, if I did that, I'd probably have to put in a $100 bill. <laughs> we might mix up seating in surprising ways. Let's just linger on this slide for a minute. Isn't that great? <laughs> okay. Uh, we might have a question of the day that you'll find on the table. And that'll give you, each of you would have to answer that and talk about it um, with each other. We might have pop-up service projects during meetings where we, uh, where we fill banks for um, food for people do, who don't have enough to eat. You might even get a song from your president. <laughs> and who knows, we might have so much fun that we'll want to change our tagline to Downtown Topeka Rotary. A drinking club with a service <laughs> club. <laughs> that sounds like fun, doesn't it? All of this may be thinking it's way outside the box, but heck, as far as I'm concerned, there is no box. Finally, now this one is, is really unimaginable. I dream of a predictable place to meet <laughs> and good food. It was very clear from a recent fireside chat that every one of us had that very same dream. Earlier this year, uh, some of you were involved in looking for a place, and uh, we called it the uh, New Home Committee. That committee was charged with exploring options for a meeting place that better suited our needs, was predictable, and was gustatorily satisfactory. The committee gathered a tremendous amount of information, but we found that we were just a little bit premature in trying to really give uh, good options to the club. That team will reconvene very soon, and hopefully we will be able to present more information to you early this fall. Meanwhile, 
Enjoy your lasagna. <laughs> I'm very excited about our upcoming year and all that we can accomplish together. Some things we can measure, some things we can't. But I'm confident that building on our past accomplishments, we will move forward to do even more good in our community and in the world. We have a really fabulous leadership <coughs> team in place, and I'm so grateful to our board and to others who have agreed to serve this coming year. Now on the screen, you're going to see two of the possibly lamest slides you've ever seen. There's the one, and there's the other one. It took me hours to get those. Um, and this is our leadership, I'll go back to the first one. This is our leadership team. Some are board members, some are not, and people that I've asked to help us out in various capacities. But um, I would like very much to those on the screens to please stand up and be recognized. So if you're in a leadership <coughs> position, please rise and let's give them a hand. <clears throat> and just to be clear, I want you to know that if you feel like you have been overlooked <laughs> as a leader, or if you would like a title, believe me, I promise I will get both of those things for you. Please just get in touch with me. And in fact, there is my cell phone and email address. And last night as I was typing this up, I put 2249117. I wonder what that means. I don't know. <laughs> this year's Rotary theme for Rotary International President Ian Risley is Rotary Making a Difference. And as the Downtown Topeka Rotary Club, we are people of action. We give, we do, and we serve, and grow, and we have fun, we laugh, we cry, and we make a difference. I'd like to close with the words of Buddha. He said, the value of life is not based on how long we live, but on how much we contribute to others in society. And as Rotarians, that is what we do. So let's go do it. Thank you. Next week, we will be back here at the Ramada, hopefully in the Grand, if they get the air conditioning fixed. They need to fix it everywhere. Not yeah. <laughs> yeah. um, and the program is going to be Steve Wolgast, titled as Fake News, so that could be very interesting. Now, one little thing I didn't share with you. Uh, when I was at the RA convention, there were many, many booths with all kinds of things to purchase, and I came across this one little thing, which is a new form of the uh, for my test, and I want to share that with you to see if you think we should change. It's called the four-way beer test. <laughs> it says, is it ice cold? Is there enough for all concerned? Will it build goodwill and much better friendships? Can it get any better than this? <laughs> so I think uh, the Rotary people up here will probably be a little upset if we did that. So, Instead of a four-way beer test, we will close with the four-way test plus one. So please rise and we will say the four-way <coughs> test plus one. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned?